Gra, gra, gra. I know using gun sounds probably not the most biblical, but if you remember that Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord. He died on the cross and rose three days later, and you got a relationship with Him. You're working on them convictions. You're doing better than most. I can't lie. We outside right now in my backyard with the new camera, with the new microphone. Not with the new fit. It's a pretty lazy fit. Now, before I get into this message or this video, I just want to thank everybody who's been here. I think we have 875 subs right now. I want to thank all y'all. Like, I don't think y'all understand. Uh, great. Someone's calling me. Hey, girl, I'm uh, I'm doing a video right now. Let me call you back. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, that was my mom. So, anyway, I want to thank y'all for everything y'all have been doing. Man, the comments have been a lot of love. I've been, in, I've been in this season of, like, anxiety and, like, really focused on my future, kind of, if that makes sense. And, like... I realize I gotta give it to God, you know, because I've been stressing about what's tomorrow gonna be, and then I end up messing up, messing up on like what today is, and like I've been noticing, like I gotta focus on like He's sovereign, His plan will fulfill my needs, and I struggle with that so much, and I also noticed though, like I need to up my quality on what I'm doing because God's given me some talents of speaking, music. And if I'm doing everything lazy, I'm not really using my gifts. Someone that really encourages me a lot, shout out Spiritual Lemonade. He stays consistent with the quality, helped me out with my thumbnails. Shout out Spiritual. Um, I also want to shout out Ruslan, one of my favorite YouTubers. When I was struggling in my faith, that was someone who I would look to and I would actually enjoy watching his videos. So, I don't know, I'm just thanking a lot of people right now. Just because, like, man, I never thought I would get to a quality video like this. Like, I never thought I would get there. And here we are. So, I don't know. Keep pursuing your gifts. God's got a calling for every single one of y'all. Anyway, I got to preach this Sunday at my home church. If you don't know, I study ministry at Oklahoma Wesleyan University. And I got to preach a little message and um, a little message. It kind of went 35 minutes. I'm back for spring break right now. probably should have said that. Anyway, this is not the main passage or the whole passage, but... This is a verse that I wanted to go over real quick for y'all because I thought this would apply to a lot of young believers. Maybe not young believers, but new believers, even strong believers that forget this easy message. A big question I think we ask all the time is, how do we know we're going to be in heaven? Like, how do you know you're going to be in heaven? That's like a big question I feel like a lot of people ask. And I think this this verse really answers it. So verse 14 in 1 John 3. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. So I don't think that's like the key to salvation. But that's how you know your life is different. By love. Like you have to love others. There has to be a key difference in our lives and a non-believer's life. If you look at a non-believer's life and you're like, wow, he loves way more than I do. That doesn't mean you're not saved, but like, there should be some conviction on like, okay, yeah, I should probably up my game a little bit. Like, and maybe not game's the right word, but like, I should be more intentional in how I love others. One of my pastors uh, in my hometown, not my hometown, but in the college town I'm in right now, he said, who's the Judas in your life? And it made me think, like, who's a Judas in my life? And I'm thinking about a bunch of people I can't stand. And then he brought up, pray for them. And I know we always hear, pray for our enemies. But he made it so evident. He was just like, when you pray for them, your heart gets softened. He goes, but even deeper, think about this. Jesus went and died for Judas, knowing Judas would betray him. You might know some people have betrayed you and have done you wrong. You're still called to love them. That doesn't mean be best friends with people who hurt you and backstab you and do you wrong. Like, no one's telling you, someone's abusing you, no one's saying they go chase the abuser. But there's got to be a sense of love. And that doesn't mean you love them where you give them things and you let them keep hurting you. I think that love could look different. And a simple prayer could change it. 
I think a lot of people get hurt by the church. I think we fail sometimes to love others. I know some people probably overlove, and I don't know if overlove is the right word, but they give out a lot of things, and probably the legalistic side of the church is going to be like, no, the, some people are giving out too many stuff, and they're giving out money to all these people preaching that prosperity gospel. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say I think we need to love people a little bit more. If you're a new believer, if you're a young believer, go read First John. Go read James. Very practical. I'm getting back into my word consistently, and I feel like this is where, I'm, where I've been at. So, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. Catch you on the next video. Peace. Also, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and in the comments section, let me know if you really enjoyed this. Anyway, catch y'all. Bye.